Chapter one of our story begins on a bright early morning in Burgundy. Miss Danguet, a one and a half year old heifer, is about to give birth for the first time after a gestation period of nine months and seven days. In this open air stable, designed to ensure the maximum well being of the mother during calving, the livestock farmer puts the mother to be in an individual stall with clean bedding and then awaits for nature to take its course. Labor can last a long time, several hours, a whole day even. But a few hours later, things take a bad turn. Time is of the essence now. The other cows in the stable sense the danger. The oldest and most experienced ones instinctively sense that Miss Danguette is going to need help to calve. The cows start mooing in unison. This repeated and insistent mooing is an alarm call, which immediately alerts Alexander, the farmer. To avoid losing both the calf and the cow, Alexander has to intervene rapidly with the calving jack. And a few short minutes later, the calf is delivered. It's a 45 kilo male called Nugaro. Guided by her maternal instinct, Miss Danguette licks her calf. In this way, mother and calf become familiar with one another's scent. Barely dry, just an hour after his birth, the newborn instinctively attempts a vital yet tricky exercise. That's it. Bottom in the air, back leg stabilized. The calf makes another attempt. Mm. Well, you know the saying. If at first you don't succeed, Nugaro is the latest arrival in the great Charolais family of beef cattle, recognizable by their white or cream-colored coats. Here, the onset of spring transforms the Roussi farm into a veritable nursery, where 40 or so calves are born in the space of just a few days. At dusk, on his first day, the calf imperatively needs to drink the colostrum, the first maternal milk rich in antibodies that will protect it from infections. It needs to feed to build up its strength. Like all calves, Nugaro is instinctively drawn to the smell of the udder. It makes its way feverishly towards the maternal teats. But by the looks of it, he's still a 
bit wobbly on his legs. Our story continues farther to the west. At daybreak, on the Isle of Ars in the Gulf of Morbihan, the last land area before the vastness of the Atlantic Ocean. This is the home of Stern, a Breton Pinois, whose normally peaceful life is about to be disrupted. For under this mud mask is a true bovine beauty, selected to compete in the renowned Paris International Agricultural Fair. Stern comes from a breed of small, hardy cows that arrived in Brittany at the time of the Viking invasion. She was born nine years ago here on this island that she's never left. She's getting ready to welcome her eighth calf. For her, just like for the other 25 cows of Violaine and Sebastian's livestock farm, Daily life is paced by a fixed routine that's reassuring for these animals that don't like change. One of Stern's favorite pastimes are the licking sessions, carried out alone or with another herd member. Cows are by nature social animals. They can only live in a herd, and they use their tongues for just about everything. Licking each other and exchanging scents calms tensions and helps promote good relations within the herd. But the main activity of the day for this fine animal is eating, which occupies 60% of its time. With its four stomachs, somewhat akin to fermentation vats, a cow can digest all plant matter and can ingurgitate over 20 kilos of hay per day in winter. Today, however, Stern's peaceful existence is going to be seriously disrupted. For the first time in her life, she's tied up, standing to attention. It's shower time now to get her coat in ship-shape condition. The younger cows watch the scene with curious eyes. Initial surprise gives way to a pleasant sensation of well-being procured by the brushing. A cow's back is particularly sensitive, which enables it to feel a simple fly landing on its skin. Stern's now ready for the second phase of her preparation, still attentively watched by her young public. It's time to go to the beach to practice walking and step on a leash. Over time, a very close bond is formed between Sebastian and his cow. Stern trusts him implicitly and does what's asked of her with docility, 
a characteristic trait of cows used to men who treat them kindly. For Violaine and Sebastian, Stern's breeders, the stakes are large. The Pinot Noir is one of the rarest breeds in France with barely 1,000 head of cattle. A few years ago, these cows almost completely disappeared from our landscape, their existence threatened by the agricultural barons who didn't think them profitable enough. So, winning the competition would be a kind of sweet revenge. The following day, it's in very typical Breton weather that Stern sets off for Paris. The sight of the cattle truck stresses the cow and she starts to panic. The 20-minute boat ride that takes them to the continent is a veritable ordeal for Stern, who moves about in agitation, nose to the wind, head held erect in search of reassuring signs. When she finally lands on terra firma, her torment comes to an end. It's in heavy, drizzling rain that she leaves her native Brittany en route for Paris. Our story continues far away from Brittany, much farther to the east, in the heart of the Van Noise National Park, where winter is drawing to an end. After five months of being permanently cooped up inside their stable, Troisième Étoile, Caline, Pompette, three fine abandoned milk cows, Anne Gazelle, the Tarantaise, with her tan-colored coat and darkening around the eyes, are impatient to stretch their legs now that the spring thaw is here. <laughs> <laughs> 